Hey YouTubers, how we doing? Uh, I was uh, recently down in Florida and my dad was uh, working. He asked me to come out to the garage. I have a problem with uh, my car. It won't start. And I uh, went out there. He's having a problem with his, uh, his starter. Uh, nothing, no power going to the starter. I asked him if he had a test light. No, he didn't have a test light. I dug through uh, my pile of tricks in the back of my truck and I had a test light. And we went through the trouble of trying to figure out what was going on. And uh, uh, lo and behold, we kind of tracked it down to a uh, uh, inline fuse. That was the issue. But uh, he kind of wanted me to do a little video on how to do a um, how to use a test light. So here we are. I'm going to do a little uh, how to. It's going to start really simple, and then we're going to kind of go on to more and more stuff that you can kind of do with it. Anybody who has any um, tips or tricks they want to add on, feel free to write them on the bottom. Uh, I'm going to go do a little bit of talk about what I'm familiar with them and how to use them and here we go. Got a couple of things kind of set up. One of them is uh, a little Mustang here. We're going to prop you down and see how close I can get you. Using my stand here, I usually do a handheld on this jobber. So let me see how good we're doing as far as uh, seeing what... Then you see what I can see. And I'm just trying to get to the battery. I'm gonna start with that. Okay. We good? I think we're good. Okay. First and foremost, this is a, a decent test light. It's a snap-on test light. Um, it doesn't really matter what it is. All they are is just a bulb with a, a wire putting power to each side of it. First thing, anytime you want to go use a test light, glue it across. Make sure the light lights up. It doesn't light up. Get something wrong with your test light, and you're not testing anything. You're gonna think everything you have is wrong. Doesn't matter which way you go, you can have it on positive, negative, you can switch them around, you can do negative, negative, positive. Doesn't make a difference. Uh, obviously, most of the part, most of the time, you're going to stick one end on negative and you're going to go poke around and see if you have power at different locations and different things. You can stab into wires. Anytime you light it up, you know you have power there. Um, that's probably how most people use a test light. For what they're using, you could actually use it for other things too. You can take it and say um, a common problem is the like on a pickup truck. You hit the brake lights while your tail lights are on, and all the lights just kind of dim at the same time, and uh, you're not quite sure what's causing that. A lot of times, what happens is you lose ground to something. So you're getting power to it, but you're not getting ground, and why it's why it does that dimming effect like that is because it is using the other element as the path of ground you know it's flowing from one to the other it, if there's no ground there it's going to have whatever other path it can find and with automotive bulbs the two elements that are in them are not the same resistance one's brighter one's dimmer you know your brake lights are brighter than you than your tail lights so one element has more resistance than the other so what it's doing is actually using the path of that to come back so what you can do is you're probably gonna have to put a jumper on your lead but for your best bet go right to the battery with your ground go around to the back where the light is and you're gonna touch right on the two center posts of your brake and your tail light and if you you know while your brake lights on you put it there you have power you know you're good you put the other one there you have uh, with your uh, brake light and your tail light rather you turn that one on and uh, you have power you know you have power going to both those sockets so something's wrong it's either the bulb or something else is missing so um, having said that you can now go and, and switch the other way around go from your negative onto your positive and touch the body of the light that the round is part of the socket you touch that part of the socket and you're not lighting up you have no ground going to that socket so that's where you lost it and usually it's a strap going to the bed itself that uh, it lost because it's all rubber supported and you lost your ground on that um, another way to use a test light you can use it as, as a current meter uh, what I mean by that is say if you're uh, you park your car motorcycle tractor whatever it is and the battery seeps seems to keep going dead and you're pretty sure you got a good battery but you know you park it and then you know, two days later the thing's dead or a week later or a couple hours later uh, you can use a test light as a current meter with older cars um, that doesn't have a computer memory you shouldn't see 
anything. I'm gonna try to figure out a good way to get this on there. Let me just stab it into my head. Like, okay. So I took, it doesn't matter which terminal you take off, you can take the negative off or the positive off. Dig that puppy right in there. All right. So I took the test light and I put it in between. I put one end on the terminal, one end on the battery post. This car, there's no draw on it, nothing's on, the battery's never gonna go dead. Um, if something was on on the car, that light will light up. I'll prove it to you. I'll open my door and the, um, the door lights will wanna come on. See what happens. Now if you notice, the light came on. The battery's not even hooked up. But what's happening is it, there's a path that wants to be completed. It wants to go through those elements, um, go from that terminal to that battery. That's telling you that there's a current draw somewhere. With that current draw, it's gonna run your battery down. Now, if you do that, um, as I said, other than modern cars or a modern radio in an older car, uh, there's a very, you might get a very slight dim light on it, but it shouldn't be much at all. That's just kind of the memory for the clock and for the, um, um, the radio and computer, but it'll be very, very dim, barely even be able to see it. The brighter that light is, the more of a load that's on there. So you can kind of tell how much draw that you have on that. Um, at this point, you can take that and start pulling one fuse at a time out of your fuse box until that light goes on off. Once you find that one fuse that's causing the draw, you can look up what that fuse is, and now you know what circuits are causing your problem. All the cars are common for like um, uh, the charging system, uh, alternator regulator, uh, not shutting down, ignition switch not turning off, rear defrost staying on, things like that can, can stay on and, and draw your battery down. Um, so, you know, and, and of course tractors and bikes and everything. Just circuits that are, are just not shutting off. A lot of times relays, if they have relays in the system, the relay will stick into the on position and not shut off. So that's kind of the test on that guy. We're gonna go move over to go look at something else and see what we get. We're gonna talk about uh, fuses. I said some of this stuff is, is simple, you know, it's it's common things, but uh, I figure I'll hit them all. It may help some people. Some people may not. Um, fuses, you know, they have a glass window in them, and uh, most of the time people pop the fuse out or they look across it and they want to see if um, they have a blown fuse. But with that, same thing, put one terminal on your negative and uh, test your light, make sure your light has power, and then you're just going to go to each side of it. If you have power on one side and you don't have power on any on the other side, uh, going up and down your fuse box. These are still in your fuse box. They're not uh, out of it. And uh, one side of the fuse box is the power side. One side is the receiving side where everything else is continuing on being your safety. Anyway, you touch one side, it lights up. Touch, touch the other side, it doesn't light up. It's a blown fuse. doesn't matter what it looks like in the window. That's your issue. Um, certain fuses will have energy to them at certain times. Some will be powered all the time. Some will only be powered when uh, the key is on and uh, so if you power you're not getting power to either side uh, there's different scenarios for that fuse for different times that's the old style fuses modern fuses on the back of the fuse you look real close you see those little, those little metal tabs sticking out right there you're gonna do the same thing you don't need to pull them and try looking across there and, is that blown is that not blown you could actually just probe right in there and right in there and see if you have power going to them. And same scenario with those. Some, some have keys, some don't. All right. I even made a little checklist just to make sure I talk about everything. Uh, let's go with um, battery charging next. Let me get your set up so you can see. I deal with a lot of like, you know, stuff I dig out of people's backyards. And most of the time, the batteries are stone dead that are in them. And they can be revived, 
but new battery chargers. They're called smart chargers. Not really very smart, kind of stupid actually. But um, the problem is, if a battery is stone dead, where there's nothing at all, I'll show you up the test light on this one. You're not getting anything out of that charger at all. The uh, battery charger, uh, the new smart, the new smart battery chargers um, need to see a very slight. I'm going to call it a resistance. And um, if they don't see anything, they won't put any charge out. So now I'll turn this charger on. So if you put a test light across it and you let it set with that light on there. It, it's kind of tricking the battery charger into to recognizing that there's something on the other end that is trying to charge. Um, you can leave that on there, and um, I also use it for kind of testing how the battery's taking a charge. I'll come back 20 minutes later and um, turn the battery charger off. I'm gonna let that sit for for a minute, see what this battery does. I don't no clue. Um, but if you see that the it, it's just holding. A very little bit and the lights dim and it's starting to take a charge then you know that if you leave that there eventually it will take a charge the slower you charge a battery the better they don't like heat heat destroys batteries so kind of take your time as far as uh you know trying to, to bring the thing back to life you could charge them up quick and do a boost on them once or twice but if you keep doing that time and time again uh, say you're trying to start something that's been sitting a long time you'll kill the battery you gotta kind of let it charge slow. So once you notice that it's starting to take a charge, knock your battery charger down to your lowest setting and just let it charge. Uh, another thing about batteries um, that I know of is if you notice on the battery that um, the side is puffed out, it was a dead battery and you see the, the sides bulging out a little bit, pretty much going to tell you that battery is junk. Um, when the acid and the when the battery has no charge in it, the the inside fluid separates. The water separates from the acid, kind of once it's higher than the other, and it's not in a suspended state. The water will freeze. When it freezes, it pushes the plates apart and actually tears the plates apart from their mounting, uh, as far as I understand it. And every time I've kind of seen one, and I don't cut them open and look at them, but uh, when I see that condition, I know they're pretty much junk. Uh, I'm, I live in the Northeast, so it's a common issue. You know, things uh, sit out in the yard. See, it's a garden tractor like this battery here. Sits out and um, it goes dead or the key was left on and then it sat over winter. Uh, the battery went dead, it freezes, it cracks. It doesn't matter if a new battery or not. It, they're just pretty much junk. So we're going to let that go a little bit. Actually, I'm going to need my test light to talk about the next thing. So we'll just see what we get out of this. I'm going to go shut that off. I, that battery was dead before. Now you can notice it's actually starting to take a little bit of a charge. So I would just, um, you can just leave the light on, it doesn't hurt anything, but I would knock it down to its lowest setting. And you can kind of see that, uh, you know, that battery will probably uh, come back. Enough to take some charge. You don't know if it's gonna be good or not. The other thing you can kind of tell is too, is um, the difference between turning the charger on and off, how well it's taking a charge. If you see a, a big change in the, in the color of the light, between on and off, then you'll know that you, you, you have a lost cell. If it goes down real dim, then you know you only put out about, you know, uh, each cell I think is 1.2 volts. So you get a roughly like a, a good battery should be about 12.7. And with the car running, uh, they should be between 13.7 or 13.5 and 14.7. Anything more than that, you're overcharging, you start baking a battery. Moving on, when you're working on a car and you're having an issue with uh, uh, you got a dead miss on a motor, and it doesn't matter if it's uh, electrical or not, you're just trying to find out what cylinder has a dead miss. Yeah, let's see if I can get you kind of zoomed in on this thing. Yeah. This is cold, so I'm going to have to run it for a minute. Now, I'm going to talk before I start the thing up just to give you an idea. But what we're going to go do is you can use that test light. Try to find something that's getting good around. You could actually physically flip you around so I see what I'm pointing out here. Um, you can actually take the test light, one end's grounded, 
And instead of pulling these wires off one at a time and trying to zap yourself and not and not get electrocuted, you could actually take the test light and sneak it down inside of each uh, spark plug wire and short each one out at a time and hear that the motor's got a miss. You find one that doesn't have a miss uh, when you short it out, that's the zone that, that, that you're having an issue with. So you look further into that being a, you know, a bad coil wire, bad plug, no compression, intake leak, whatever. You, but you'll know what cylinder you're working with. So I just kind of started up and give you a little example of that. I know for a fact that number, I believe it was number one cylinder on this motor, which I'm actually on right now, has a little bit of low compression. I got to do the full motor and do a little bit of work on it. But you can hear the difference in between the other three that when I did it, you heard a uh, uh, more of a drastic uh, cutout on the motor than that cylinder. So that can also kind of tr help troubleshoot a, a rough running motor besides one that's just you know missing altogether. Here I pull it out and pull it out again. I'm not going to get into too much of about talking about like, um, say you're hooking up on something, and um, you're on ground and you just want to poke around and see, make sure you got power going to your coil and all. Um, there's another thing you could actually do with it too, same kind of idea uh, as we did with, uh, no, actually it's not kind of the same as that, it's uh, going to be for timing. What you're going to do is kind of do the same, ground it out, I can't remember which way to do this on this, is it going to be hot or ground, I'm turn the key on. And you're going to go find the wire that's your points. This is good for point ignitions. And you can kind of see that uh, you're having a signal coming from there. You rotate it. That signal's going to turn on and off. Make sure the camera's picking that up. Yeah, it is. So, having said that, you could static time your car and see where your timing marks are. And uh, do a static time with a test light. You don't need a regular test light to do that. So if you know on this one, the cusp. I haven't tuned this motor or anything, but I can tell right now that this is a little out of time. Let's see if you can see that. Flip you around. You look right on there. It's a good turn the light on. Okay. You can see right there is where I'm breaking, and my timing mark should be right there. So I am physically that far out. So you can actually set, set your timing with a test light uh, being static. Uh, again, when it's running, it's a different scenario. You have a vacuum in advance that's coming into play, but um, that's how you can do. You know, if you don't have everything else to work with, you just, uh, just another trick to use with a test light. All right, guys. That's uh, what we're going to kind of do for now. I'm going to go turn that light off. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm going to shut up. There we go. So uh, that's what we got. Uh, if it helps on me out, so be it. 
uh, I hope so. And uh, I know a lot of it's kind of, you know, plain simple stuff, but uh, I figured I'd go do one. All right, Papa Joe, there's your, uh, your little crash course. I, I know you bought the test light already, so now you can go play with it and see what you get out of it. All right, thanks for watching.